Okay, YouTube, there's my beautiful controller. As you can see, no lights are on. As I power up, all my lighting comes on. So, the lighting in this room is horrific, okay. I don't know if you can see, but all those lights are on, along with that light. They look a bit duller than usual. Okay, basically there they all are on. And when I take the battery out, and I put the battery back in, there's no light until I turn on. There we go, once it boots, I've got light. It's pretty awesome, it's hard to find a tutorial on how to do it, so guys, please enjoy my... Hi there guys, this is what your transistor, the 2N3904, should look like from the top. Your ground pin is going to go straight to your negative terminal on your battery. The 1.5 volt input is going to go to, okay I've got a new controller so it's the top pin on my right hand trigger. If you put a multimeter across it between that and the negative pin, it should give you 1.5 volts, but you know you're soldering in the right place. The emitter I connected mine to my Jewel Thief because I'm running a Jewel Thief. If you're using low power LEDs, you can just hook that straight up to your grounds on your LEDs. Uh, I'm using a Jewel Thief. If you need the schematic for a Jewel Thief, I would recommend you go onto the Instructables website, www.instructables.com. I will put a link in the bottom and search Jewel Thief. That'll tell you how to make one. It's pretty self explanatory. When it comes to installing this thing, if you can't solder, don't attempt it. My video footage isn't so good, but you should be able to make out what's happening, otherwise you shouldn't be messing around with your controllers. Hi there YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a video on how to set up the lights on your 360 wireless controller to switch off when you switch the controller off. This is kind of not so lacquer, but it's basically a transistor. If I'm not mistaken, it is a 2N3904. I've got that, some heat shrink, I think this is 3.5 more formal would be better. This is a piece of wire, three cores, old um, ribbon cable from a computer. I pulled the wire from. I have my soldering iron, my solder, my flux. Okay, I've used this Torx screwdriver over here. It's actually a proper Torx. I had to break the sensors out of my screws to open up my controller. Got it all open up here. My one, because of the LED they used, I couldn't run it off the battery because I'm using these little guys. The chargeables, they 2.4 volts so they don't power the LEDs properly. Basically all this Jewel Thief, if you need the plans, they go to Instructables and search Jewel Thief. There's a very simple uh, drawing of it. My buttons are out of place at the moment but I'm going to rig them up. When I hook them up, as far as I know, I'm going to be hooking up the wires. One over there on my negative terminal, the battery, one on the positive and one on the right hand trigger negative. That'll give me a 1.5 volt, and th this will give me a 2.4. I'll put up a few matches so you guys can see. Okay, now I'm just going to solder this. This is my I'm just here, small little guy. I'm going to just quickly solder that to the wire. I'm just going to prune these a bit, and then I'm going to whack it on. I'm going to put the camera somewhere. Um, that should work. Okay, I'm just going to trim the wires a bit. These are thin wires, you just use a you scan enough, works like it. Okay. Always helps to use flux. It just makes the solder joint much easier. Yeah, my solder is not in the best way at the moment. It was a cheap one. So here in South Africa we work in rands, not dollars. So it cost me about, I think it was a hundred rand with the stand and all pile of things which works up to a couple dollars twelve dollars or so this now I'm going to use a set of helping hands real quick because they make life quite a bit easier as annoying as they are always get in the way they make life a little bit easier ok now I've pushed a piece of heat shrink over it it's not going to shrink all the way to the wire but I'm going to do it anyway just so that I don't get any unwanted connections inside my Xbox controller which is never ideal when you do that. So I'm just going to use this lighter. Just do that. There we go. 
Here we go. And that just shrinks on there. Just makes it a bit more, or a bit less likely to have a problem. Okay, and on the other hand. My dual feed pulse connector up these way, we just connect straight to the battery terminals. So there's my positive, and over there's my negative. So now I'm going to take my thing, I've stripped the wires back. I'm going to rehook this all up so that it looks a bit better. Once I've cut all the wires stuff, I'll show you how to solder them on. Okay, I'm going to shove mine down here, just below the guide light. There's a big enough cavity for me to fit in, I can run the wires down next to the D-pad. And they're going to go, I'm going to hook them up to the battery over there, there, and up there. Yeah. I'm going to set the wire lip. Because I'm running a dual feed, I've got to add this little resistor here. All it does is goes off the negative to my wire. I'm going to hook that wire up now. It's going to go in like that. And then it's going to just, I'm just going to put this little piece of heat shrink over it. Just to protect so nothing gets shorted out. Okay, now this one, unfortunately I can't solder and hold the camera, so I'll have to show you once it's done. There we go, it's soldered together now. Jesus, camera is cock. But anyway, sold it together, the wire comes back over here and to my jewel thief. It's going to shrink it now, there we go. It's got a piece of little heat shrink tube. Just push that on there. And it shouldn't interfere with my D-pad. This is my knowledge, it shouldn't. Just going to check. Um, new. No shouldn't interfere with the d-pad I hope because if it does then I've got to redo this but anyway that should work I had it the other way before but this time I started to do it this way okay okay I'm back I've hooked up my low voltage wire my two high voltage wires and it's hooked up into my jewel thief so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pilot test it whack a batch in and turn the xbox on sorry I'm just trying to get my d-pad back together Now it's time for the moments of truth. Okay, my light's all there. Obviously not going to put it all together before I test it, because that's just fat and stupid. Okay, it looks promising. And then let's see. There we go. My lights are now on, and my Xbox controller's on. I'm now just going to disconnect my battery and pop it back in. You may notice, okay, let me show you. You may notice it flashes once when the battery goes in. It's just dropped out. That she's not going in now. Okay, let's just focus on that. Okay, I don't know if you saw that, but anyway. Okay, we'll flash once as the thing just kicks in. Then we'll switch it on, and then they only come on. Which means when I put my controller off, I don't have to take my battery up to turn the light off. I see no one's done this on the internet yet. Well, that was the final tutorial. I know if you buy a kit, it will show you how to do this but I'm not buying a kit because I don't feel any more money. Okay, now this over here is going to fit in there with the guard light. I'm going to put it all back together and show you once it's together. Okay, YouTube, there's my beautiful controller. As you can see, no lights are on. As I power up, all my lighting comes on. So, the lighting in this room is horrific, okay. And as you can see, but all those lights are on along with that light. They look a bit duller than usual. Okay, basically there they all are on. And when I take the battery out, and I put the battery back in, there's no light until I turn on. There we go, once it boots, I've got light. Pretty awesome. It's hard to find a tutorial on how to do it, so guys, please enjoy my...